Nelson Mandela's grandson, Mandela Mandela, has chastised Meghan Markle for making a comparison between South African celebrations around her wedding to Prince Harry and the incredible scenes of joy when the anti-apartheid hero, Madiba, walked free from prison after 27 years. Mandela Mandela was disturbed by comments she made during an interview with The Cut. Stay with us for more about the potential clash between Meghan and the Mandela clan and other news from the universe of Harry and Meghan Markle. First up, that interview and what what she said. In her interview with The Cut, Megan told how an actor pulled her aside while she was attending the Lion King premiere in South Africa, a former British colony back in 2019. Apparently, the actor wanted her to know people were rejoicing in the streets when she married Harry in the same way the populace took to the streets when Nelson Mandela was released from prison in 1992. Apart from the Madiba comment, Megan also took a couple of side swipes at the royal family. Keep watching, we'll bring you more of those in a moment. So, why is the Mandela clan and so upset? Mail Online was told by Mandela Mandela, Nelson Mandela's grandson, and also a member of parliament in South Africa, that he was surprised by her comments. The core of the celebrations on the day of Nelson Mandela's release was about overcoming more than three centuries of colonialism as well as the 60-year suppression of black citizens under a brutal apartheid regime. The two can just not be on the same level. Mandela Mandela emphasized again that it was a far more important celebration when his grandfather was released than her celebrating a marriage to a white prince. The scars of South Africa's past are still fresh. The unified nation voted in the first inclusive, free, and fair democratic election in 1994, two years after Mandela's grandfather was released from Polsmoor Prison in the Western Cape province of South Africa. Standing up against the persecution of black people by the South African apartheid state of the time cost Nelson Mandela 27 years in prison. He was eventually released in 1990, and after the first free elections in the country in 1994, he became the president of the first democratically elected government of South Africa. Grasa Michelle, Madiba's widow, hosted Meghan and Harry when they visited South Africa in 2019. Meghan also bared her soul about her brief stint as a British royal. That follows soon in this video. Keep watching. Meanwhile, she also emptied her heart about the royal family. During her interview with The Cut, Meghan also took a few jabs at the royal family. She claims that the two of them upset the dynamic of the institution just by existing. Other members of the royal family had been permitted to relinquish official duties in the past, but they were prevented from doing it. She also spoke about how Harry took her into his confidence and lamented that he had lost Prince Charles as his father. That, according to Meghan, happened during the royal upset about their relationship. Omid Scobie, her unofficial spokesperson, has said she was talking about the loss of her own father, Thomas Markle, when she made the comment. In a short while, we'll tell you what happened when young Archie's bedroom caught fire. Stay with us. Then, she reflected on her brief stint in the inner sanctum of the royal family. She described this experience as bitter sweet, and she still believes things could have played out differently. She said she and Harry upset the royals simply by existing. She also believes the media was at the center of many of the problems they experienced at the time. That's the main reason they approached the Queen to get permission to step back from their duties while becoming financially independent. They were hoping that would stop all the media noise, she said in the interview. It's the primary reason they made the suggestion to the Queen in the first place. It seemed like the best idea to simply leave Britain. That way, they felt they'd be able to escape the persistent gaze of the press. According to her, the proposal she and Harry put to the Queen wasn't intended to reinvent the wheel, but it didn't go down well. In her opinion, that was a double standard. They weren't allowed to step back from royal duties even though a precedent for this kind of thing had been set by various members of the family in the past. Now, there has always been a special relationship between the royals and the Mandelas. The relationship between Harry and Meghan and the Mandela clan has been special over the past years, almost similar to the one that was forged between Harry's parents Prince Charles and Princess Diana, and Madiba. In commemoration of Nelson Mandela Day on the 18th of July this year, Harry was asked to speak to the UN General Assembly in New York, for instance. Back in 2015, when Harry visited South Africa, he also met with Nelson Mandela's widow. Then in 2018, Meghan and Harry spent time with Zamazwazi Dlamini Mandela, Mandela's granddaughter. This was while they visited the Nelson Mandela Centenary Exhibition in London. And this relationship is reminiscent of Charles, Diana, and Madiba, the late Princess of Wales spent time with Madiba during a visit to her brother, Earl Spencer, in Cape Town. When Nelson Mandela visited Britain in July 1996, four years after his release from Poles Moor Prison, Prince Charles took him on a tour of Brixton in South London. Later, in 2002, Mandela made a detour at Althorpe State in Northamptonshire to see where she was laid to rest. Meanwhile, Archie's bedroom caught fire in South Africa. A security source has confirmed Archie's nursery was the scene of an accidental fire during the family's South African visit. And the same source said, 
said the British police were asked to keep this quiet. A message came through to Megan while she was en route from an official engagement. Her vehicle immediately broke away from the convoy and sped back to the residence, which was provided to the couple by the British High Commission in South Africa. A source told of how the security plan changed on the fly when the convoy was on its way back from the engagement. He said he wasn't sure whether they were coming from Nyanga or Monwabisi, both are Western Cape Townships. They were driving in a convoy when the cars assigned to Megan suddenly broke away. The main convoy turned around to follow her. Harry wasn't with them. According to the source, he was busy with an engagement with the South African Navy. The source also said the fire was left unreported upon request and that the British police told everybody with knowledge of the incident to keep quiet. The one thing the source was not prepared to comment on was whether Archie was downstairs as reported or in the room where the incident happened. This person, who is believed to be in the couple's inner circle, spoke of personally seeing a severely melted heater. Remember to stay with us to see how Harry speaks to the United Nations about American politics. That's coming up. And because of her Mandela comparison, South Africans don't show much empathy. At this point, Meghan had already offended South African sensibilities. The wounds caused by the apartheid years in the country run deep, and the freedom brought about by a statesman of the stature and caliber of Nelson Mandela is holy territory for all in the country. On Twitter, typical messages showed individuals had little empathy for the fire scare. It didn't help that Meghan had also in the meantime said in an interview that traveling to a country like South Africa was the bravest thing she had ever done. Needless to say, this added fuel to the fire, pun intended, of South Africa's disdain for her. One Twitter user said one would swear she was asked to plunge headfirst into the apocalypse. Another questioned the fact that Archie didn't accompany her on any of her South African engagements, which was a fair comment considering that Catherine had done it in Australia and New Zealand without any issues. Further Twitter barbs suggested she left the kids behind at the home the British consulate had arranged for her and Harry because she didn't want them to dilute the attention she would be getting everywhere she went. Meanwhile, the fallout from Meghan's Mandela also comparison continues. After the comparison she made during the interview with The Cut, a hashtag, hashtag VoetSecMegan, began trending in South Africa. VoetSec is a derogatory Afrikaans language word that means get lost or go away. It's a common slur. On Twitter, comments continued to fly. Some of the comments were sardonic and others were downright mean, but all expressed annoyance with her attitude and her clear lack of insight into the unique journey towards peace and reconciliation South Africans had traveled under the fatherly guidance of a world-class statesman and elder like Nelson Mandela. Finally, Harry seems to be striking the right notes on the international stage. Harry waded into American politics during his Mandela Day speech at the United Nations. He used a large part of the address to blast the rolling back of constitutional rights. He went after the United States Supreme Court's reversal of the famous Roe v. Wade decision and called it a global assault on democracy. He also had a lot to say about the brutal Russian invasion of Ukraine. To end this video, they may be out of the royal spotlight, but the lives of Harry and Meghan Markle are by no means means void of controversy or excitement. It is easy to forget that royals are simply human. That's all for now, folks. Keep a lookout for our next upload.